Hey, welcome back to my Fundamentals on Photography series. Today's the day you've been waiting for because we're going to go outside, we're going to find a decent location and we're going to show you how all those elements of the exposure triangle work together to produce a well-exposed picture. So we're just at the beginning of December, it's cold out there, so I need a hat and I need a coat. And now we're ready to get out of here. And welcome to the great outdoors. Here we are at one of my favourite locations. We've got a waterfall behind me that flows into the sea on that side. We haven't got very many clouds in the sky today, but you know, we'll make do. So what we're going to do is run through exposure and how it all works together. So when we talk about exposure, we're talking about three different elements. We're talking about ISO, which is film speed. We're talking about shutter speed and we're talking about aperture. But how do they all work together? Well, what your camera does is that it looks at the whole scene. So it will take that scene and it will mush it all up, much like you do when you're making soup. So when you're making soup, you put carrots in, you put onions in, you put mushrooms in, you put potatoes in, you put peas in, you put cabbage in. All of those elements go in and they all have their own colour and you mix them all up and stir them all up and you can still see all the colours until you blend it all together and then you get this sort of orangey brown mush, which tastes nice but is all a uniform colour. That's how I make my soup anyway. So that's what your camera's doing when it works out what the exposure should be. So it's working out all the elements of the picture. So it's looking at the light, the dark, all the different colors, the contrast, and the light, ambient light levels. It's mushing them all up, and it's then comparing them to 18% gray, roughly 18% gray. So about a 20% gray color is what your camera thinks that a normal scene should be. And that's how it works out what the exposure should be. So you don't see it doing that, it just does it automatically within a fraction of a second and it gives you the shutter speed, the aperture and the correct ISO. And if you have, it on, if you have your camera on program mode, then that's what the camera will set and you can then go merrily about taking pictures. If you want to take your camera off program mode, then you need to work out what the actual camera is doing and you can override those things. So just let me explain. So here I have a pad and a pen. And just to explain, let's write down the three elements of exposure. So we have aperture, shutter speed and ISO. So when you look at that, that looks like it could be a triangle, which is why they call it the exposure triangle. However, it's actually more like an exposure seesaw. When your camera's on program mode, it'll work out a good aperture compared to a good shutter speed compared to a good ISO. However, if you want to take your camera off program mode and say you want to use the aperture more than you care about the shutter speed although you want to keep the same shutter speed but you want to weight the exposure more towards the aperture side all you then have to do is shift the ISO to counteract that so you've still got a nice balance between the aperture and the shutter speed you've just changed the ISO so ISO really is more of a, a balance between the two and doesn't really affect the look of the picture until you get up into those higher ISOs like I explained in my ISO video which I'll put up in the corner there. What we're going to do is look at aperture and shutter speed separately to show you just how they affect the overall look and feel of a picture. Okay so we're just going to go over to the waterfall I'm going to set my camera up over there and I'll run through what we're going to do with aperture and then I'll change position and then we'll run through shutter speed. Welcome to the waterfall. I've got my camera set up here and we're going to look at aperture. Now if you remember from the video I did on aperture and I'll put the link up there or up there wherever it comes up, you'll, the aperture is actually just a hole in the lens that allows light to pass from the outside into the camera. Now that hole is adjustable so you can vary the amount of light that comes in. 
on its very basic level, that's all Aperture does. It just fluctuates the amount of light that comes into the camera. However, the critical element of Aperture is that it also controls the amount of the picture that's in focus. Now we call that depth of field. And now if you imagine your picture that you're going to take has a sheet in it that runs parallel to the digital chip in your camera, so parallel to the back of the camera, that sheet can either be thin or it can be thick. A thin sheet means that very little of the picture is in focus. A thick sheet means that a lot of it is in focus. So a thin sheet is a small depth of field. A thick sheet is a big depth of field. Now this is where the aperture, which is measured in f-stops if you remember, becomes a bit more intuitive because the smaller the number, so f1.8, f2.8, f3.5 or f4, the depth of field is very small so the sheet is very thin. Bigger numbers, so a smaller hole, and that's f16, f22, f32, that means the sheet is a lot wider so the depth of field is bigger. So the bigger the number, the bigger the depth of field, the smaller the number, the smaller the depth of field. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to photograph this scene. I've got the main flow of the waterfall just off to the right hand side of the centre. I can see this little trickle of the waterfall here and we've got the line going all the way down. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to focus as close as I can onto this trickle and I'm going to use a very small number so I have a very shallow depth of field and I'll put the picture up and you can see just how much is in focus. So you'll see there that all of this foreground is in focus and everything behind is out of focus. Now if I change it to the main flow of the water then you'll see that the main body of the water is in focus and all of this foreground is out of focus and the background is out of focus. When you're taking a landscape picture like this the key thing really is to get as much in focus as you can. Using a small aperture is perfect for things like portraits or picking out individual elements of a picture. But if you wanted to get a lot more of this in focus, what you'd have to do is stop down so you get a much bigger number. So at the moment I'm at f3.5. If I then stop down, and at f3.5 I've got 1 640th of a second shutter speed. If I stop down to f22, I now have a 20th of a second shutter speed. If I wanted to actually have that, with the same shutter speed, all I need do is change my ISO up and in this case to 1600 ISO and I'll get the same shutter speed but I'll have stopped down to get a much greater depth of field. So if I now focus on the middle main part of the subject you'll see just how much more of the picture is in focus. If I come in a little bit, so I'm actually focusing on the grass there that you can see in the middle, you may see that there's even more in focus because the way depth of field works is it tends to throw more of the background into focus than it does the foreground just the way it works. So if you're taking a scene like this and you wanted to have as much in focus as possible just focus a little bit in front of your subject and then everything behind should be in focus as well if you use a really small aperture so a big number big depth of field. So if you've all understood that let's just change position so we can then start talking about shutter speed and how that affects the look of a picture. You may be wondering why I'm standing in a river in December with cold water washing around my feet. Well, I do this quite a lot. Uh, if I'm not standing in a river, I'm normally laying down on the, in the mud. So um, it tends to give me a bit of an edge uh, when it comes to composition. You often find that the best compositions 
are the places that people don't want to go to. So standing in a river, lying in mud, that sort of thing. So the reason I'm doing this is just because this is the nicest composition and the best way to show you just how uh, effective shutter speed is at controlling the look of a picture when it comes to something moving like water. So what I've got is a setup with the river coming down over the waterfall, down along over the stones and just trickling by my feet. Now, if I wanted to capture every single drop of water, what I would do is use a really fast shutter speed. Now this camera can go up to one eight hundred, one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed, which will just freeze all the motion in everything and you'll see every single little drop. But that may not be the best looking picture when you're taking pictures of a waterfall. Now you've seen those pictures with the water where it looks like, even though it's a still picture, the water actually looks like it could be moving. Well that's because people are using a slower shutter speed and because we're on a tripod, everything that's not moving will be still and captured sharp and everything that's moving will be slightly blurred. So let me show you what I mean. If I could do this without getting my knees wet. So at the moment, so we want a decent depth of field so I'm going to set F10 and I want eight thousandths of a second so we're at ISO 6400. It's a bit excessive but it will show you what I mean. So it will show you that the shutter speed is really really quick. If I want to really drop that shutter speed down I'll take the aperture all the way down that I can and then go right down with the ISO so I'm now looking at 1 13th of a second. And you can see just how much motion blur is in that water, but the stones around it are all stationary and motionless and absolutely pin sharp. Okay? So that's really how easy it is to control the shutter speed. So if you want something that's really fast moving, you need a really quick shutter speed. And if you want something that's looking like it's actually moving in the shot but of course isn't then you want a slower shutter speed but anything lower than twice the focal length of your lens and you're going to need either a tripod or a monopod something like that just to hold the camera steady so that's just a quick look at exposure i'm sure we'll come onto it a lot more in future videos so you know what to do click the like button if you want to leave a comment there's the box down below click subscribe when you if you want to know when my new videos are coming up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.